friends and colleagues, Frank O'Connor, Creative Franchise Development Director for 343 Industries. Uh, Tajin, his, full, his actual name is Satoru Toshima, but Tajin, we lovingly call him, uh, Audio Director for 343 Industries. <laughs> Kevin Franklin, who is your multiplayer lead designer. And Sparth, who is the concept lead for Halo 4. And together this makes most of your creative team for Halo, the, most of your creative leads for Halo 4. So we're going to talk about that creative process for a little bit um, before we shoot some faces. So um, we're going to start where I think it, you can confirm whether or not this is true, but we're going to start where I think it always starts, which is story. Um, so, or it, tell me if I'm wrong, but I know that when you um, came to 343, you were presented with an opportunity that very few of us ever get, which is to sort of craft a brand new story, but yet working with an established franchise with beloved characters. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, the, the, the lot of hard things in putting 343 together. The hardest, of course, was uh, assembling a team from, we, we started with something <coughs> like nine people, uh, 12, depending on how you count it. Uh, and uh, we had a lot of difficult things to do. We had to build a studio of 250 people. We had to take over where Bungie had left off. We had to build technology and we had to build a game. And all of that stuff is hard. I think that the only simple process uh, in the whole thing was deciding what the story was gonna be. Now, it's not the same as creating it, but picking a thread uh, and which thread to follow was the, the only difficult part. And I think, uh, the, the, or rather the only easy part. And we, we, we realized right away that especially from fan reaction. Um, people enjoyed ODST and they enjoyed Reach, but they wanted to find out what happened to the Master Chief and Cortana. And so that was a really easy decision. We said we're gonna follow uh, in Halo 3's footsteps. Um, definitely craft a new saga, and we've said that a bunch. This is a new story and it's a standalone story, uh, but it follows chronologically directly after the events of Halo 3, picks up. But four or five years later, Chief's been in cryosleep. You guys all know this, this stuff, of course. Um, but it was, uh, but it also helped uh, build a foundation for the the rest of the work that the team would then have to build to sort of realize that vision and make a few really simple story ideas turn into something that really sings. And uh, we're nearly there. We got three weeks to go uh, before the game is actually in stores. Unless you're in Mexico. And uh, <laughs> but uh, the uh, we're we're really excited to get it out there uh, and and have you guys play it. And we we know that we like it and we know that we're proud of it and we're proud of the team and the work that they've done. Um, but ultimately, you guys are the ones who decide whether it's a success or not. Uh, and and of course, the most important part uh, above commercial and and sort of marketing success is critical success. And you guys have a real voice now. And and the internet and and media has changed since the first Halo came out, and we hear you guys loud and clear, and uh, we'll be listening very, very closely on November 6th. So, so I was there when you joined the studio, and one of the first things you started talking about was a new enemy class. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about one of some of the things you were thinking about and what led you to where we are now? Yeah, I mean, the, the, it's, really a, it's really a design question. The game has to drive everything. Uh, we, we hadn't put in a whole new class of enemies in Halo since the first game. Uh, the, the, everyone's familiar with the Covenant, and uh, we've added to them slowly over the years. We added buggers, we added brutes, uh, but we never sort of revamped it. And uh, we, we felt that this was a great opportunity to, to tie the story into that new enemy. And of course, that's the Prometheans, and you're, you guys are going to get to be very, very, very familiar and angry with them uh, on November 6th. Uh, but the, uh, they had to be philosophically very different. We tried to make them uh, where the Covenant are tactical and aggressive and uh, hardly simplistic. They do, they do complex things and they show intelligent behavior all the time. But we wanted them to feel primitive, uh, beside deliberately primitive beside the Prometheans. And so we, we focused most of the the thought behind the Prometheans on making them kind of a more strategic enemy, uh, something where it's it's always wise to get a look at the battlefield before you jump down in there, and uh, and take them on. And uh, we we told uh, we just finished a review event over in uh, over in a weird hotel room in, in uh, Midtown, 
And we had all these Halo fans reviewing the game, and they've played every single Halo game, and they know how to deal with the Covenant. And uh, we had to tell people, play it on normal. Don't, don't try and play it on heroic first time. If you want to switch to heroic afterwards, do that. But it's because you have all this muscle memory built up over 10 years of playing Halo and learning how to defeat the Covenant. And then we throw a wrench in the works, and we really sort of turn things upside down. And the Prometheans will they will continually surprise you, and we hope they'll keep surprising people for years. So, not long after Frank was starting to talk about this stuff, it started to show up on, on paper and digitally with Sparth and his team. Um, and I know they used to, you guys used to sort of go off in these little rooms and come out battered and bruised, but with a drawing. So, um, do you want to tell us about a little bit how that worked in that room back there? So, uh, concept art is actually at the very, uh, very uh, initial stage of the of the process of uh, of, uh, of of a game. They 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 really here to uh, to um, put in, uh, in into visuals a lot of the uh, concepts and, and the creative ideas that uh, the team has been having uh, and that they want to propose and that they want to really see visually see. So, uh, our goal is to actually. Uh, have people uh, see th these things in, in, in advance and, and being able to get inspired. And uh, basically, um, when it came to all foreigners, uh, foreigner architectures and, and all the, all, all the uh, things we really had to uh, upgrade, uh, we basically very often uh, had to uh, go in a room with a small room, a small mini room with a whiteboard and think, and think about uh, how we could actually bring all that stuff to a new level. Um, we still had the, uh, the legacy of the uh, previous Halos to actually help us uh, really uh, figure out where to go, but uh, at the same time, we were just not wanting to have a simple upgrade. We, we wanted to, uh, through the foreigners actually, being able to uh, really boost uh, not only the, uh, the um, the, the visual, the the uh, art, art direction of of, of of that new uh, of that new uh, visual uh, visual system, and uh, and it, it had to be done with a uh, with a lot of thinking. We uh, we had a uh, actually it's it's very interesting because uh, when it comes to foreigners, the more we were uh, thinking about it, and the more we wanted to focus at finding something new, fresh, and the more we actually. Um, we're putting ourselves rules to uh, say, all right, uh, maybe foreign uh, architecture is just going to look like this, this, this. And we were uh, having like sets of like maybe 15, 20, 30 rules. The more we were doing that, the more we ended up like not failing, but being very slow at creating something very, in very interesting. So uh, we, could, we had to either lower the um, set of rules when it comes to architecture, visual direction, or either like sometimes uh, uh, bump that set of rules, but we had to find the right balance to be able to be uh, creatively free of, uh, of having something um, amazing and new, but at the same time uh, not being too stressed about it, because the more we were focused on it, the more we were actually just like doing circles and, and, and just not going forward the way we wanted to. And, and you've said that there was one level where it sort of all came together? Yeah, actually heaven is, uh, <laughs> was a... Uh, well, yeah, it's my French uh, accent, sorry about that. <laughs> Haven was uh, <laughs> a very, uh, very important level for us because uh, for the first time we were able to uh, um, really visualize what the new form of visuals would, would, uh, would be uh, looking like. Uh, at first, uh, Haven was actually just not looking like that. It was, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as uh, usual in maps, you really have a mess out, and then you just like walk and walk and walk. It's like really carving. It's like uh, um, polishing the surfaces to the point where you reach, uh, you reach a point where it is something really, uh, it, it is just going to look new and, and fresh. But before having that level, we pushed the map and pushed it and pushed it to, to, to its last extent. And uh, it took quite a, few, quite, quite a few weeks and months, to be honest, but uh, Haven was the map that actually did the difference. Uh, when you look at that, that um, uh, image, for example, the back, um, that monolithic uh, figure in the back, uh, we, we must have been having... Uh, 25 of these, I'm serious, like, uh, and for each part of the map we had, um, we were just, uh, you know, extracting uh, 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 shots from, from, the, from, the, from, the, um, from the video, and, and then we actually, like, put paint on it and paint on it and, and just do paint overs over and over and over to the point of having something really badass. 
and this is the end result, and uh, we're very happy about it. Once we got Haven, we were able to really go forward into more for new architecture, but uh, we're very happy to at least go somewhere. But Haven was really, um, it was some sort of a journey point for us, very important. And then you sort of leveraged those rules kind of into the, um, into the character design and the weapons design as well. Uh, could you repeat that, Alison? Sorry. Sorry. You, you kind of leveraged those same rules that you established for the architecture into the character and the weapons design as well. Yes, exactly. When it comes to, to Fauna, so uh, on one side, the, the covenant is actually more organic. It's actually uh, based on a lot of curves. It's also, um, um, I think, the, the, the covenant looks like the aliens that you would actually more regularly see uh, in, in sci-fi. Um, and uh, we wanted to um, really have something drastically different from that. Not only uh, on the architecture, but also the, the, the weapons that are actually very mobile, very active, very this like snappy bits that just like get off and all that stuff. And, uh, and uh, we really wanted to have something unusual, something surprising, something v like more than alien in a certain way. And kind of speaking of more than alien, one of those moments that really I find it very impactful, I bet they do too, is um, the, when the night screams. Um, sort of that, that moment. I, I can't imagine being in the room when you guys came up with it, because I wasn't. Um, so do you want to talk about that really quick? So when it comes to the final effect, uh, it really came afterwards. Uh, when, when brainstorming, we knew that we wanted to have something that we'd, would look like this, but it's, it's only when it's actually animated and, and that you really uh, have the full visual in front of you, like a punch in the face, that, that it really makes a lot of sense, and we're like, this is it, and we have it. When it comes to the... Um, the night uh, on the um, on the concept outside um, on the visual side, it's a it's a it's a fact that we once again we had tons 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 of uh, iterations done by uh, our, our great um, uh, Robo Gabo Gabriel Garza, who's actually a, a crazy machine when it comes to have full sheets of uh, nights and uh, and nights figures for any character concepts, and uh, and after many many iterations, we we ended up finding that uh, the fact of having that. Uh, strange insight was something that would be really very, uh, very uh, surprising and impactful in a certain way. The, um, the figure, um, which is very skull-like, uh, is like, it's an opening on, on something, once again, very uh, deadly in a certain way. It's, 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 uh, it's some sort of a surprise blow, the fact of having its face opening, um, knowing that, of course, uh, the skull is uh, what we could call uh, the one of the best uh, archetypes of, uh, of, of death and the, be the best incarnation of death in its own way. Uh, yeah, that scares me. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, when we speak about the night, one of the things that is also very affecting about that is the scream, um, the sound. So, which brings us to uh, Tajin. And do you want to just really quick talk about what they're singing? Because yeah, so I bet you they don't know. Okay, <laughs> the Promethean uh, sound production, it was really exciting production. So uh, we started uh, audio production. Uh, we were looking for uh, something, voices, which is something really vicious and unique. And uh, we uh, went to Tasmania and to get a Tasmanian devil's voices. And so uh, blending uh, our own human voices to it and uh, processed them uh, with the ton of digital processors to adding uh, some kind of technological feeling to it. And so we wanted to make it as kind of intelligent, but really vicious, the digital animal. So, um, you know, Marty music has always been one of, of, of Halo's most beloved pieces, and um, stepping into his shoes is no small task. So what, sorry, <laughs> Everyone, I'm looking at the panelists. What uh, what sort of guideposts did you set yourself, and what sort of goals did you give yourself when you set out to do that? The, for the music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, probably so as many people so already knew. So we worked with uh, uh, Neil Davich, uh, who is a producer and co-composer for the Massive Attack. And the biggest reason why so I wanted to work with him was that uh, he's really great at. Uh, establishing a dramatic melody and so uh, great and cool percussion track. In addition to it, the, his music style is uh, kind of perfect synced with uh, our concept, which is 
digital and organic. And so, yeah, I think that his passion for Halo is awesome, and I think he, he achieved to bring something fresh experience to the video game music on Halo 4. And, but he's not the only piece of the story. We have Kazuma at home who yeah. does a lot of our interactive mm -hmm. music as well. Yeah, so, uh, so we definitely know so how important so music is uh, on Halo 4. So Halo 3 had a really great music. And so actually I am a huge fan of Halo music. And so Halo music has a 10 years history. That means so people grew up with Halo music. So, um, the, you know, the Neil Davich so brought a great epic music to the Halo. But so we actually so had a, another composer the, who is uh, Kazuma Jinnochi. Um, the Kazuma and I worked uh, with a couple of Metal Gear Solid project together. And so I really respecting his passion and the music composition. And he had a, a little bit specific task, uh, which is establishing the music, which has a kind of the Halo-esque we inherited from the past Halo. And he looked into the past music a lot. And uh, with his own interpretation and our own idea, so I think he established a great music too. I agree. Um, so uh, th what is your favorite piece of audio design. I have a hint. It's on um, the slide. I think it's uh, definitely one of my favorite. It's weapon sound. So, yeah, so recording gun sound with army special enforcement and branding with a bunch of audio sources. I think my team achieved a really, really impactful punchy gun sound. So especially the Promethean gun sound is, sounds really unique. And so I can't wait to share the sound with people. Well, so you don't have to wait very long right now. Do you see what Kevin's doing right next to you? <laughs> and we're going to talk multiplayer with Kevin Franklin. And this is like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. We just go, Kevin Franklin, can you talk about multiplayer? And then I'm going to sit down. <laughs> uh, so it's been fantastic for us doing these panels because so far we've really told the story of Halo Reborn and how we've recreated the classic modes with um, bringing back free-for-all with Regicide and creating Infinity Slayer, uh, obviously reach, uh, changing CTF and putting in all sorts of rule changes. So for this panel, we really want to discuss some of the new things that we're adding to Halo 4 that are, you've never seen before. And you saw in the video for, for the first time, Dominion is one of the big new modes that we focused on right from the get-go. Um, it's a very large mode with, uh, that sort of merges big team battle and objective gameplay in a way we've never seen before. We will be signing the get out the vote poster. If you came by our booth, you will have seen or gotten one. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for Thank coming. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.